Thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, the resurgence of Al Qaeda. The terrorist group is back after President Biden's withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan. We'll tell you about their terrorist activities and how they threaten Christians in the country. Could a rising new political movement take votes away from President Biden and throw the election to former President Donald Trump? That is the concern of many Democrats, but the group No Label says it wants bipartisan solutions to today's political problems. With church attendance on the decline in the United States, we're going to take a look at how one organization is using the latest technology to connect people of faith. And she was a breakout star in the hit film War Room. Now, actress Karen Abercrombie is back as a juvenile court judge who delivers justice and grace in the new series called Eleanor's Bench. This is CBN News Watch. I want to begin this half hour with the resurgence of the terrorist group Al Qaeda now running rampant in Afghanistan. A new United Nations report says the group is operating numerous terrorist camps where Islamic fighters are training for suicide missions. And Afghanistan's tiny Christian population is more at risk now than ever. Still, these believers are standing strong in the face of deadly persecution. CBN's George Thomas is on this story. Despite promises that Afghanistan would not become a haven again for terrorists, the 27-page UN report says groups like al-Qaeda have greater freedom for maneuver under the Taliban than before, and that the threat of terrorism is rising in both Afghanistan and the region. The Taliban has been cooperating with al-Qaeda, has been supporting and sheltering al-Qaeda. It did it during the U.S. presence in Afghanistan, and it continues to this day. Two years after the U.S. withdrawal, al-Qaeda-linked officials are reportedly now helping the Taliban lead in three provincial governments and have five new terror training camps around the country, including one in Nuristan. The camp in Nuristan, the United Nations, notes that al-Qaeda is training terrorists to conduct suicide operations. Al-Qaeda has also opened safe houses in Kabul and three other provinces. All of the locations that the UN notes where Al-Qaeda is running training camps, safe houses and media operations centers, I've tracked over the last decade and a half Al-Qaeda having a presence there. Senior Al-Qaeda leaders and operatives and, and low-level fighters have been killed in, in all of these provinces. Meanwhile, the UN says the ISIS threat is also growing, leaving many Afghans, especially those who are non-Muslim, uncertain about their personal safety. Afghan Christians are literally moving from house to house. They've switched off their phones. Dr. Martin Parsons has worked in Afghanistan for years and says even though life for Christians is dangerous right now, it will only get worse as al-Qaeda's strength and footprint grows. The Taliban follow a code of Islam called the Hanafi Code, which basically says any adult male who is deemed to be a convert to have left Islam um, gets three days to repent, and then is executed. But under al-Qaeda, it's simply execution on the spot for Christians. No one knows for sure, but Parsons estimates that there are between 5,000 and 20,000 Afghan Christians in the country. Gospel is not going to be stopped by, by, by al-Qaeda, Taliban, or ISIS. Former Muslim and native Afghan Hussein Andares hosts a Christian television program that's seen inside the country. He's in regular contact with secret believers who tell him they are undeterred by the growing threats. Yesterday, I spoke with one man from Badakhshan. He says, no matter what, I will follow Jesus even if I have to be killed, even if my entire fellowship here, he's a church pastor. We will go on trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. They are very strong. A recent State Department report blamed both the Trump and Biden administrations for not adequately planning for the withdrawal and failed to anticipate the collapse of the Afghan government. George Thomas, CBN News. Here at home, a new political movement is raising concern among many Democrats who are worried it could take votes from President Biden and re-elect former President Donald Trump if he gets the Republican nomination. The name of this rising movement is No Labels, and they say their objective is to move both parties back towards the center. There's even talk of creating a third unity ticket if the choice comes down to a showdown between Biden and Trump. CBN's chief political analyst, David Brody, has this story. 
Headlines are touting the potential impact of no labels as it lays the groundwork of a possible unity ticket in 2024. Civil rights leader Dr. Benjamin Chavis, an ordained minister and former CEO of the NAACP, is navigating political waters to support the centrist effort. The reason why I'm moving to the center with no labels is because I want to see further change. Mm. I want to see our nation do better. Mm. I want to see our nation open up more opportunities for all of God's people. No Labels has been a Capitol Hill presence for years, supporting the House Problem Solvers Caucus. It's helped lead to bipartisan achievements like the recent infrastructure bill. As 2024 approaches, members believe Americans want a moderate, common-sense alternative and point to polling that shows nearly 60% of citizens would support a centrist presidential candidate. Critics push back on those numbers. I know 538, which is a political organization, some others have said, now the middle is actually not that big. The good news <laughs> is the middle is growing. The middle is expanding and it's intergenerational. Millennials, Generation Z, but also elders, middle-aged people. No matter how big or small, No Labels believes these voters really don't want to see another Trump-Biden rematch. What is it about that rematch that has No Labels concern exactly? I would like to see uh, President Biden move more to the center, mm -hmm. not to the left. And I, I would even like to see uh, former President uh, Trump mm -hmm. move more to the center. Mm -hmm. away from the extreme. So we, let's see what will happen. What I predict is mm -hmm. we're going to stir a national discussion about these issues. And they've got tens of millions of dollars to do just that. Right now, the priority is getting on the ballot in all 50 states. They're on a handful so far, about five, with more to come. Next spring, they will announce final plans at their convention in Dallas. We're going to discern whether or not uh, a unity ticket, that is a Republican and a Democrat or a Democrat and a Republican, have, if that ticket has a pathway to win the majority of the Electoral College votes. While they won't name names on that ticket, Monday in New Hampshire, centrist Democrat Joe Manchin headlines a kickoff event announcing their new common sense policy book for America. With former Maryland Republican Governor Larry Hogan also a no-labels guy, the group is triggering both political parties. You're getting fire from all sides, but the... But oh, the we're, getting, we're getting fire from uh, <laughs> uh, both sides of the aisle. Right. Right now, probably more fire uh, from the Democrats. Right. Uh, because they are nervous that somehow we would tip the balance... Over to Trump. Uh, ...in favor of uh, former President Trump. Dr. Chavis's resume dates back to the 1960s as part of Dr. Martin Luther King's civil rights movement. When he made his I Have a Dream speech, it was undergirded by his faith in Jesus Christ as coming to heal, restore, and resurrect humanity from self-destruction. And I think that we need that today more than ever before. You think he would be a no-labels guy? Today? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Chavis also is convinced that in today's political atmosphere, we need to hate less and love more. We may disagree on some political but you're not my enemy because we disagree on something political. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. And here now is a look at some other stories we're following for you at this hour in the CBN Newsroom. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says Republican lawmakers may consider an impeachment inquiry of President Joe Biden as they look into allegations of possible financial misconduct related to the Biden family finances tied into information coming from various sources, including whistleblowers. McCarthy told reporters as more of this continues to unravel, it rises to the level of an impeachment inquiry. But so far, the claims aren't proven, and McCarthy has not set a date for moving ahead. President Biden's son, Hunter, is expected to appear before a federal judge today to plead guilty to two tax crimes and admit possessing a gun as a drug user in a deal with the Justice Department that's likely to spare him time behind bars. The judge must sign off on the deal, and sentencing is not expected today. And congressional lawmakers will hear testimony on UFOs or unidentified aerial phenomena in a bipartisan hearing today. Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett says he wants to know why more information has not been released, although there have been claims that alien spacecraft have been recovered. The Pentagon says it has no verifiable information to back that up. 
Coming up, digital outreach from ads for local churches to multi-million dollar spots during the Super Bowl. We're going to show you how one group is using the latest technology to connect people of faith. We've got the story when we come back. Church attendance continues to decline in America. One in five Christians attend less often than before COVID. So to change this trend, a modern day marketing tool is now being used to revolutionize church outreach. CBN's Brody Carter brings us this story. The numbers tell the story. Even before COVID closed doors, membership in America's houses of worship were headed below 50% for the first time in the 80 years, Gallup had tracked that trend. From just before the pandemic through last year, overall church attendance dropped 3% over those three years. In looking at the why, the Pew Research Center found the problems inflamed by COVID, with one in five Americans reporting they attend church in person less often than before the pandemic. The new trend that we're seeing is um, people have moved or they disconnected from their local church um, during the pandemic and they're ready to reconnect back into their faith community. And Glue, a ministry platform, is building on that trend by working behind the scenes online to help people connect with a church. And so we make it possible for individuals who are curious and seeking to be able to connect into a local church and a local conversation. If you've ever wondered why you randomly get online ads for mental health support, marriage help, or dating sites, it's because your search activity isn't a secret. In fact, it can be a goldmine for companies like Glue that are paid to connect you with people who can help. About 1.8 million individuals that search for relationship help. That's the top trend Glue sees in research. I did a follow-up interview with Glue on how it's using that data to perfect its marketing strategy. And just like any advertiser can purchase sponsored ads or do SEO optimization um, so that they're showing up in that search results, um, that's one of the strategies that our outreach partners are using. Executive Director Devin Klein sees the company as an online connection engine. So it's really not taking big da data. Um, it really is just uh, being a part of the results that get returned back when somebody is searching for help online. Klein specializes in connecting you, the explorer, with local churches and companies that Glue calls responders. And church responders pay from $1,500 to almost $4,000 each year to fill empty church seats. And we have 23,000 organizations who are using our tools. And so a subset of that are 6,300 churches who have registered and said, I would love to connect with people in my community. Glue started in 2010 and recently found its stride, connecting 150,000 people with churches nationwide in just two years. The 150,000 plus individuals are getting help. And right now we're matching somebody every two and a half minutes. And so that means every two and a half minutes, a church is getting introduced to somebody in their community that may not have thought about walking through their church doors. Kelsey, got it, touchdown! You've likely heard of Glue's largest partner, He Gets Us, which made its debut at the Super Bowl airing two commercials, part of a $100 million ad campaign aimed at making Jesus more relatable. So we're talking about Jesus, yes, but Jesus doesn't need rebranding. Jordan Carson, spokesperson for He Gets Us. We really have two goals, and one is to reintroduce people to Jesus and his confounding love, and the second is really to call upon Christians and have them self-reflect on the way that they're treating others. Other major partners include Church's Care and K-Love Radio. While Glue and its partner's primary motive is converting people to Christianity, the marketing tension between selling and converting raises questions about using marketing strategies to promote Jesus for profit. Yes. Sometimes it can represent those tithe dollars, but most of the time churches are not um, joining glue and participating with that motivation. However, congregations are reaping benefits. We've had over 500 people that we've been in connection with in the last 18 months. Greg Reed with Christ Fellowship Church in Florida says this digital outreach makes it easier to share the gospel. So it just gave us a different view of what evangelism looked like. And I think what Glue's helped us is like, how do we reach those people who they're not going to look for a church? They're not going to go online and look for a sermon. They're just on social media and they're searching for something and they don't know what it was. 
Participating churches can expect about 12 new connections per month. As these digital campaigns succeed, you can expect to see more outreach that expands beyond the web to public venues, including professional sporting events and music festivals alike. Klein says pastors and churches often become disconnected from their own community. Now a number of churches are thanking Glue for helping them get back to building stronger relationships with people who walk through their front doors. Brody Carter, CBN News. Still ahead, she's back. Actress Karen Abercrombie, who is well known for her role in the hit film War Room, moves from the prayer closet to the judicial bench in a new series focusing on a juvenile court judge. We'll bring you our look from her and Studio 5 right after this. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. Eleanor's Bench is a mini series following a juvenile court judge on a mission to deliver justice and grace. Actress Karen Abercrombie was unforgettable in the film War Room, and she's now traded the prayer closet for the judge's bench in this new leading role. There is rarely an easy day in this courtroom. All rise for the Honorable Eleanor Thomas. The project we're going to talk about, at least right now, is Eleanor's Bench. Yes. Tell me about. The project? How did it, is it something you wrote? What is it? No, I didn't write it. Mm. I had worked with a gentleman in Virginia uh, many years ago, and at that time he was telling me about this project, Eleanor's Bench, and he said, well, uh, if it comes to be, would you be interested in playing Eleanor? I said, absolutely, especially, you know, after it filled me in on everything. I believe in redemption. We shot it. It's a powerful, powerful story about a um, woman who grew up on the other side of the tracks, inner city. My old neighborhood. Daddy, you can't stay here. I'm staying in my house. I've had a good run. I'm good with it. There's memories of your mom and me around every corner. And she leaves, and uh, she is in D.C. working for the premier um, law firm. And um, one thing leads to another. She leaves this prestigious law firm, and uh, she becomes a judge on a juvie bench. I want to see if I can get this one moved into my court. Look at your son. Do you want to be reunited? Mommy! Her mother was my best friend. I promised your mother that I would watch over you. Starts interacting with kids in foster care, kids who've aged out, kids who've got a bit of a record, and yeah, changes her life for the better. You know, it never made sense to me how people walk around their whole life and only talk to God when their life is falling apart when they could walk around with him all the time as their best friend. When did you, on this path of, of, of art, artistry, recognize the power of what it is that you do? I, I've always been attracted to it. I've always had a vivid imagination. I even had an imaginary friend when I was a kid. And um, in my neighborhood, I would create stories and all the other girls, I'd bring them in and we'd uh, I guess I was producing. <laughs> we performed them. And uh, it, I just always loved it. it. It was just in me. And um, came time to go to college or decide what I was going to do. And my I wanted to uh, be a psychiatrist. But um, every time I had a free chance, I was looking for somebody's play to audition for. And eventually I got brave enough, I guess, and I auditioned for a school in New York, an acting school, got in and haven't really looked back. It's just something that I can't help doing, you know, mm -hmm. and to be able to use my gift uh, to pour light into the world, um, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's God honoring. And for me, it is worship, oh, wow. you know, no matter what the role is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's first between me and the giver of the gift. You know, I'm worshiping him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the journey been like? Easy, difficult? No, it, it's never been easy. I, I remember being very hungry as a student in New York. You know, my, my family didn't have much. I went on a wing in a prayer and around every corner he met me and took care of me. 
And um, I remember being very frustrated many times. I don't know that if what I'm doing is making a difference, I don't want to live with emptiness anymore. Down the road, I realized that um, had I taken some of the roles I wish I would have gotten, it may have taken me away from what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. The course could have been very different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I'm doing, it's, it's putting up, uh, putting some eternal stuff out there, you know, raising. So it's a, yeah, and I'm grateful, you know, and um, God is just, opening up doors in a crazy, amazing way, you know? Hurt is a part of love. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Eleanor's Bench is streaming right now on the Pure Flix platform, and you'll want to keep a close eye on Studio 5 for some major news about Karen Abercrombie and an upcoming role. Tonight on Studio 5, we're going to sit down with singer and songwriter who is, who is a country music star trying his hand at acting. You'll want to meet Coffee Anderson. Then we're also going to have an exclusive early look at a Western with rich themes of faith. It's called Birthright Outlaw. And then we're going to take you to an independent studio that is shaking things up at the box office. You can catch an all-new Studio 5 tonight on the CBN News Channel at 8.30 Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app or on YouTube. Stay with us. We're coming back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. Time now for your Wednesday word. And today's word, it's love. Know this, perfect love casts out all fear. The two simply cannot exist together. So on this Wednesday, I wish you love. May he fully abide in you, on you, and through you. Why do I say he? For God is love. With that word, make today a wonderful Wednesday. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online at CBNNews.com. We would love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us. That address is newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Again, I hope you'll make this a wonderful Wednesday and join us right back here same time tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and God bless.